One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. We're going to talk about the uh, market price action that we're seeing right now. Some kind of thesis, uh, theses, 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 theses. Thesis, something. I don't know how you say that. Uh, we're going to talk about some of that and where to expect things to go from here. So, as you know, we're coming into the earnings season again. We just got one of kind of, in my opinion, a very telltale situation um, with Netflix here. Oh, what's happening? Headphones are being all weird. Oh, it was my phone. So <clears throat> Netflix after hours, this is uh, very market related, obviously. And Netflix got totally smoked um, on earnings. Um, I believe the news was subscriptions are down, I think is what they said. Not nearly as much. Subscriber growth slows as economies reopen. Uh, they beat pretty well, too. Um, and they announce a $5 billion buyback. Okay, is the buyback plan. Buyback, buyback, buyback. Yeah, so this is not entirely... Um, in my opinion, this is not the kind of earnings that we need to see in order to maintain the market at the price as it currently is. So um, I'm not going to be very aggressive on these earnings plays. And really the type of thing I'm watching, obviously futures is um, not really doing anything. With that news, um, not a big effect on that, on the S&P futures, but um, the Qs are, I mean, this was when it came out, this was the initial reaction, and then it just kind of sat there. So I don't think it's really anything to be concerned with, uh, with the Netflix earnings, but this is very indicative of what to expect out of the big tech companies that, you know, haven't really changed anything and have just kind of been doing the same thing. So, um, I'm not super bullish on a lot of these going into anything. I will tell you one thing that I am bullish on is anything lumber related. Uh, that's why I bought Home Depot today. Um, Home Depot's down a little bit. Um, I am eh, slightly red on it by like 4%. I'm like minus 4% here on my calls. So Home Depot, I, I bought uh, my initial position today that I bought was up here, 326.50. Right into this, uh, all these, I kept seeing these like these wicks like this. It was like wick, 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 wick. And I was like, man, this has kind of got the price action like it could just continue to grind back up. So I took a starter there, but really what I was interested in here, heavily interested in was this nine period moving average, exponential moving average, just nine EMA. That level right there around 321, <clears throat> excuse me, around 321, this is really where all of my attention started to come into play. So um, I mentioned in the chat room when I took my ads, uh, I took my ad right here. Um, I bought here in the uh, 322.70s um, was my additional ads. And I brought my average from like way up here to way, it's like way down. I was green here and then now I'm pretty much break even. So minus 4% or something like that. And that was really just a due to a tick difference in where it closed. So I'm pretty much break even at that point, 
So I feel like I have a decent average on this position now. And really what I'm looking at is just, I'm watching this nine period moving average. And this is, I mean, I'm focused on this. And if you guys have noticed, Home Depot has not really been following the market because the costs of lumber and the costs of just everyday materials, material costs has gone to the moon. So I don't think that tech is going to affect this play. Now, Home Depot is very market related most times. And if the market gets volatile, we could see we could see some downturn. But I think I've got a good managed risk here. And I'm just watching this nine period moving average. I'm anticipating that this holds, buying into that support, looking for some continuation back higher. Um, Costco, again, is that same situation. Look, it's the nine EMA. It's just hugging it, hugging, 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 hugging. We had a beautiful jam on Costco uh, up to 375 today. Um, I am totally out of Costco. I sold out of everything. And on that, and now I am, because I just, I have this weird feeling that earnings are going to disappoint this quarter and we're going to see some uh, retracement or some, some kind of even choppier action than we already have seen. So I've been realizing profits on anything that I had and cutting the losers and I am pretty much down to nothing except Home Depot. That's all I got. It's literally the only position I have right now. And I don't have much interest in uh, being exposed on the long side, fully exposed on the long side without hedging, which brings us to our topic of the evening. And I brought on AK Wildlife. Um, in order to discuss this, he's he's our community community options premium selling expert. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. How to uh, sell premium in these times and protect against um, what what we're going to basically call what we're calling the protective collar is and protect against uh, negative S and P returns. If the S and P is negative or sideways, how did you how do you help maintain a fully exposed long portfolio? You know, like if you have a lot of positions that, you know, are investments on the side or how do you manage those trades when there's a drawdown in the market? How do you continue to put those um, profits in Hip National Bank, basically? So, <clears throat> you there, Johnny boy? Yep, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. How are you? Cool. I am. I'm doing great. <clears throat> the 60 degrees in Alaska, so sunny and uh, it's warm for us this time of year. I guess we'll call it. There you go. It's like 60 degrees here, and I'm freezing my tits off. <laughs> All relative, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, it's kind of chilly, today. <laughs> but it's like it's like 60 degrees and stupid windy, like really, really windy. Yeah, it's yeah. like fit. Yeah, fifty four in Dallas. Yeah, that's yeah, that sounds accurate. Yeah, I come from the oh, south cool. where we don't check the weather. We just walk outside shirtless and we say, "How fast did my nipples get hard?" That's how cold yeah. it is. <laughs> One hundred and five in Florida. No, thank you. No, thank you. That right there, that right there is proof that that Florida is the basement of the world it is that is horrible oh 105 in april nah man i'm out i'm out on that i'd be oh my god sell my house get out of my rent whatever it is i would be gone from that state 
oh, he's just playing. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I was like, dude, no, no, no freaking way am I in that game. All right. So, um, 39, there you go. <clears throat> Let's talk about protecting your account from the chop. This is really, really what I'm getting a lot. Um, I get a lot of DMs about this, John. I don't know about you. Do you get a lot of DMs about this? Like in the recent I, times, like how are you staying? Um, how are you staying positive in this market where you know the the S and P just runs, and a giant? I don't know about you, but a giant handful of the stocks that I've been watching, um, they have not really followed the market as 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 aggressive as I would have expected. Yeah, because like I mean, a lot of the a lot of the ones that everybody's been trading like, you know, like um, PLTR and some of these other ones, um, F-Cell and what is the other ones? The plug. I mean, they're yeah. down a lot. I mean, big time. NIO. You know, office yeah. highs, NIO. I mean, if you look at the S&P, you know, it's, it's at all time highs or close to, and these are down, you know, 40, 50, 60% off of what they were, you know, a couple months ago. So I'm getting some of that. Yep. And, and so especially people that um, will call yeah, them Viacom. investors. Viacom, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. for the love of all that is good in this world. I have no idea why that has not bounced yet. I, yeah. I, dude, I gave that two swings and I was like, okay, nope, I'm done with this. This should have bounced a long time ago. And I gave up on that turd. For those of yeah, you sticking with Viacom, I wish you the best. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in there anymore. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Nope. Pass. Yep. Diamond, diamond hands. Yeah, diamond hands. There you go. Happy Doge Day, Viacom. <laughs> All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about the protective collar and the reasoning for the collar. You want to take it away? Yeah, so, you know, the idea behind it. So, like, the, one of the basics of just like, you know, when you talk about options and just using a tr traditional hedge, if you buy stock, you know, or own stocks, you're already long. The easiest and the most common everybody knows is, hey, I just buy a put. And that's kind of my, my floor. So, you know, the example would be is if the stock's at a hundred bucks and you're, you know, you got it at 50, you have a $50 unrealized, you might buy a put somewhere in between, you know, so you're saying, hey, if it drops to like, you know, 75, that's my, that's my, uh, you know, that's where I'm going to get out and I'll lock in a profit. So a lot of people just do that. And that's how they do, that's how they protect their portfolio is just buying puts and trying to hedge against the downturn. The reason why I prefer, and a, and a lot of people, I mean, some people know about it at trade options, but not a lot of people that are, um, kind of a newer to options don't understand or don't even realize that there's a there's a trade called protective collar that I prefer because it does a couple of things um, and it, you can essentially put it on for very very cheaper or nothing you know we'll call it, there's a lot of times you'll hear zero cost collar things like that terms mm. being thrown out on the internet and that's what the idea behind this is is it, it allows protection but just like anything else when you when you get protection and, it, and you and you and you're paying like you know not paying a lot of money, you give up something. In this case, you're giving up some of the upsize potential if it you know runs back up. So that's why you know it's not always the best in all circumstances, but I think it's a very attractive thing for people, especially that are longer term holders that have a very good you know we'll call it unrealized gain that they want to protect protect, especially going into like earnings. Earnings is a great example. You know, you know, Netflix, is, you know, it dropped 10 or 11% after hours. I think it's kind of grinding back up a little bit, but that's where this can help them allow them for a big protect, you know, allow them to put on protection for very, very inexpensive and protect them for a period of time. So that's, that's what we'll talk about tonight is a little bit more in depth about what the protective collar is, how it works, when would be a good time to do it. Obviously, you know, you want to have it on before any downturn, before any earnings events, before any major drawdowns, because you just like, you know, when, when you had big sell-offs, you know, last year and end of February, early March, if you were trying to put them on or buy puts, it was, you couldn't, it was so expensive because everybody wanted to put because the market was selling off. So you have to have these on obviously before the events happen to make them 
um, work, you know, really protect your, your portfolio. So an example of this for, for those of you that are kind of getting, getting, you know, donut eyes right now or the glazed, the glazed look, basically, if you come from the small cap land, um, this is a version of boxing. Okay. Uh, except in this strategy, there's going to actually be a return to you. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.